and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In today's video, I want to show you how to store securely different secrets and keys and values that you don't want them to be in your code. So if you want to watch more content about serverless, cloud, or software engineering practices in general, just subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> So as I said, in today's video, I want to show you how to store securely in AWS keys, licenses, passwords, like these secure strings that you need to have around when you're building any service, but you don't want to put them in your code because if they leak, they can get exposed and somebody can damage you or access places that they should not be able to access. So there should be in some place that you can modify them without affecting your code, without exposing them, and also that you can modify it without deploying the code again, because sometimes this license change, it's a license number or some secret or password, it changed, and then you will need to deploy the code again. So let's separate these ones from the code and let's not put them manually every time you need to do something like let's do them using one AWS service called the parameter store. We will be using the AWS CLI in the terminal. So I will show you how to do it. You need to have that installed, but I imagine if you've been following these videos, you already have it installed. If not, I link you in the description how to get that installed in your computer. You can also do this from the console, but I will not show you how to do this from the AWS console. I will only show you how to use it from the terminal. And after we have done this, I will show you how to grab these uh, secrets or passwords that we have added in our infrastructure and use it in a serverless framework project and also use it in our code so we can have it in our code without exposing them. So this is a very simple example. I will add one, one parameter to the parameter store and then we will go to a, a clean serverless project and I will use this parameter there. You will see that after the parameter is grabbed from the serverless YAML, then the usage of the parameter is like any other environmental variable. So it's very straightforward. So let's go to the code. So let's start at always creating a new project. Let's create a directory, serverless parameter store, and then let's create a new serverless project in it. We have been doing this forever, so I will just create a project with the name serverless parameter store using the AWS template for node. Then we just go into Atom, and there we go to serverless YAML. I will remove all the extra comments because they make it hard to read the document. And if I remove it all, then we can see everything in the screen. So now we see that we have the service name, the provider information, and the functions. I will add the profile that is our default and the region. So we are sure that it's going to be deployed in Ireland. And then with that, I can go to the AWS CLI in the terminal and type this. AWS dash dash profile, the name of the profile that we just create, put in the serverless YAML, in this case default. You need to have a profile configured in your environment. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will leave you a card where you can see how I configure this. Then the region, the region is the same, that's the serverless YAML that we just put Ireland, you wist one. And then we will call SSM put parameter. This is the parameter store library that we are calling and we are putting a parameter that has name, the name of the parameter we want to store, in this case serverless parameter store secret value. This is the reference we are going to use for this parameter in our code and what we will see when if we check it from the AWS console. Then the value, very secret value, this should be the key, the password, whatever you want to protect. And then the type, that dash type, in our case is a string, but it can be also an encrypted string. So when you put all that, then you press enter and that parameter gets added to the parameter store in that account 
not my case is default but you can have other accounts now if we go then to the serverless project again we need to add the environment because we are going to add an environmental variable if you don't know what an environmental variable is i leave you a link to the videos on how to use environmental variables on the top so you can check it out but basically we are just calling creating an environmental variable called secret value that has a reference to this parameter that we just added in our aws account and for doing that we just do dollar sign and then we put the curly brackets and ssm and the name of the parameter and then we close the curly brackets and then we will have this value the very secret value in the environmental variable that we can access from anywhere from the serverless yaml or from the code now i will create an api gateway for this function so we can try it out and this is something also we have done many times and the only thing i will modify is in the response of this request i will just return the secret value this is something you should not do but well just to show you that the the value is being returned and you don't need to put it in the code whatsoever so this is all called by references so you can just use this value and then if you change it from the aws uh, client or from the console then this call will return a different value because the value have changed and you don't need to redeploy the code so now i will deploy and i will speed this up for you as always and we can test so when this is deployed we get the url and i will put that url in postman and then we can just try it out and we can see that we get the very secret value back that is the one that we added so it's very 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 simple and very straightforward i hope you use it to store your secrets and keys and licenses and all those numbers that you don't want to expose in your code this was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And if you have any comments, questions, or things you would like to see in the future, as this is one of the videos that you have requested. So I'm going through that comments always and trying to make videos that you are interested in watching. So just leave in the comment box below what you would like to watch. And around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So if you want to keep on watching some more content about serverless just click in any of these links and i see you in the next episode of full bar ciao